Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books! And today is my February wrap up of everything that I read in February. You know, it's crazy because I read nine books in February, nine books in January, which means I've read 18 books so far this year. Um, I'm halfway through my 19th book and it's almost, uh, we're not even done with the first day of March yet. So I'm like, March, 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 I'm gonna get all these books done. But it's crazy because last year I only read 40, I think 40 books I read last year. And so my goal has been 100 books for the last couple years. And this year I'm like, stay on task, Peter, stay on task. Now, I will tell you, Mel, my book club partner, she called it cheating, but I don't think it's cheating. I did read some shorter books this month. And by shorter, I mean like on Audible, they were a couple hours, but they were still really good. So anyway, I kind of ended my week this week uh, listening to some shorter books. We'll talk about that in just a second because I'm gonna share with you all of the books um, that I read in, Feb or in February. But I want to make a couple announcements. First, the announce, first announcement is that next weekend I will be in Phoenix, Arizona, visiting my book club partner, Mel. We ha I will list her Instagram below. She does bookstagram over there. Um, and it's Ginger Gonzo Reads. I have never met her in person. I'm so excited. Um, my husband was nice enough, nice enough, nice enough to give me this trip for Valentine's Day. So I'm really, really excited. Um, next weekend we're gonna be hanging out, we're gonna be doing some videos, and we're also doing a live stream um, on Sunday. It'll just be like an overall fun free for all. Some bookish stuff, some not bookish stuff. So anyway, now, I just got done doing the book club for today. So if you don't know, I have a book club. Mel is my partner for our book club. It's not just mine, it's both of ours, 50-50 down the middle. And for a long time, it has been called Peter's Book Club, and we have been trying to figure out a title for our book club forever. The thing is, is that we're gonna start a true crime podcast as well this year. So we were trying to figure out like a title that would go from the book club over to the podcast so we could have both of them be the same title. That's just not gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't know, we'll see. So anyway, um, we decided today, we had like gone through all these different ideas. So many people had sent us ideas and we would run by them, you know? And the thing was is that for every idea that we came up with, there was either a podcast or a book club that was named that because we wanted it to be the same, you know? And so today I texted her and I said, what if we just call it the True Crime Book Club and just keep it simple? And we have like a 20 minute conversation on whether or not we should have it be all lowercase <laughs> or like the whole title or if we should keep the in all caps and the rest in all lowercase. And we decided that it will be all lowercase. So it's just the True Crime Book Club. Now Mel added a period at the end of it. I'm not really sure why. It's not a sentence. But um, I do kind of like the fact that there's a period at the end of that. So um, yeah, so we're gonna, that may evolve into something else over time, like a magnifying glass or something. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, come over there and join us. For the month of March, we just read uh, Mindhunter by John Douglas. For the month of March, we are reading um, Butcher Baker about the Alaskan serial killer. And it is Robert Hansen, I think is his name. And I'm like two hours into the audio book, which is like eight hours long. And it's really, really good. I'm really enjoying it. So come over and join us. The link is below on the Goodreads uh, link. We almost have 2,200 members, 2,200 people in this book club. I just can't believe it. So anyway, okay. Um, let's get into what I read for February. Are you ready? Okay. The first book, speaking of true crime, that I read in February was an Audible original, only audio, uh, Audible exclusive called Call Me God, the, un the Untold Story of the DC Sniper. Here, I will put it up right here. By Jim Clemente, Tim Clemente, and Peter McDonald. And Jim Clemente... Um, was also part of the Golden State Killer case. And so if you read anything about him, his name comes up in that case as well. And he is an FBI profiler. Profiler, So is his brother, Tim Clemente. The story was extremely interesting. Now, I have to tell you, um, I went into this not really knowing anything about the DC Sniper. I didn't know who the DC Sniper was. I hadn't read any of the articles about it. I remember it happening. Um, but I didn't follow the story at the time. So I didn't really know anything about it. So the story to me was extremely interesting, um, very sad, extremely sad. You know, we were talking about this today in the book club that um, the treatment of the victims in true crime books has evolved over time. And by that, what I mean is that back in the day when true crime books were the, the last row at the grocery store, you know, I talked, I said that in my, uh, in the live stream today, when you, you go to a grocery store, it was like the bottom five books were true crime books. And they were just like, you know, $3 paperbacks or whatever. 
that there wasn't much consideration for the victim. It was just kind of part of the story, you know, of this, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, just like bringing like this hyped up attention to the story. But over time, we've really started looking at who the victim was and why they were important to the case and why they were important in life. And so when we read true crime books today, at least in our book club, one of the things that we do is there's a major consideration for um, is there attention paid to the victim, the victim's families, how they felt? The DC uh, sniper story, uh, Call Me God, is so interesting because, like, the last 30 minutes of the audiobook is just all dedication to the victims and their families. And you get to hear a lot of them speak, and it talks about the execution and who was there and... Um, there's one sister of a, of a victim that she shares a lot about forgiveness and they talk about the civilian's trial and things like that. The consideration for the victims in this book was so fantastically done. You really felt like you got to know who those people were, their stories and their lives. There was one man who talked about his wife being killed and, you know, the daughter asking, you know, where she was and things like that. And that it just, it was, the book was so, um... It felt very personal at parts, you know, um, and it was it was a great read. So I gave it a five out of five. Um, I thought it was if you're if you're looking for a good true crime book, and if you don't know if you do know a lot about it, it's still it'll still be interesting to you. But I didn't know anything about it. Then the next book that I read, okay, was the extra credit book for my Peterisms channel. So if you watch my Peterisms channel, which is where I do like daily meditations and I talk about stories of my life and things that I've learned, um, I decided in November that I was going to be reading. A book a month over there, um, like a self-help, I don't love that word, but like, you know, a motivational, inspirational self-help book over there once a month. And so in November, we read The Four Agreements. In December, we read um, The Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield. And then we also read The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. I carried those over into January because of just a lot of personal stuff. I didn't get those done. So those were the January books. In February, um, I picked the book Make Your Bed, which we'll talk about in just a second. But I also picked um, an extra credit book, and that was Proof of Heaven by Dr. Eben Alexander. It is um, a near-death experience book. And I have become very fascinated with the idea of near-death um, experiences. I have been at many parts in my life. Like, I've kind of gone in and out when I was in... Um, college and undergrad. I took a class on a couple classes on death and dying. I read about Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, um, the, the stages of grief. Um, you know, I had read uh, parts of Moody's book. I even talked about this in my vlog that he references in the book, Raymond Moody's book. Um, I think it's called Life After Death and things like that. But in the last five or ten years, I really haven't focused a whole lot um, on near-death experiences, which is interesting, you know? Like, I feel like when I more have this huge fear of death is when I read a lot of those. But then recently, in the last ten years, I would say, like, since my mom's been gone and my aunt and uncle, I haven't been that interested in it, which is crazy. And then with Pee-Pee's passing recently, um, I think I was kind of looking for signs a little bit, and so I started reading more about that. I can't tell you how many videos I've watched online about dogs passing and things like that. Um, there's been some really, really helpful videos for me out there. Um, so, okay, so I read Proof of Heaven, a neurosurgeon's journey um, into a journey into the afterlife. And the whole thing about it was that it was this neuro neurosurgeon who's highly educated. He didn't believe in an afterlife and all this kind of stuff. And then he goes into a coma because of this really very rare a disease he has. He has, um, E. coli meningitis. Is that what it is, I think? And it's uh, very, very rare. Only so many people here get it and they think he's going to die and he's in a coma for seven days. And the whole time that he's in a coma, he's, like, in the afterlife, and he's having these near -death, this near-death experience. Um, okay, so, like, 80% of the book was about his life and, like, his education and his family and his kids and his wife and all this kind of stuff, which was interesting. It was okay. Like, if I knew that that was what I was going in to read, I would say 10% was about the medical issues and the other 10% were about the afterlife. Um, and he was, like, at the beginning of the book, like, this book is for the non-believers. It will make you believe. The book would not have made me believe anything. I, there was not enough evidence there for me that, like, convinced me one way or the other. I already believe in an afterlife, but it didn't convince me one way or the other. They're just, it, it was very confusing stuff. It was a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It just, and it, it wasn't very much of the book. Like, it really wasn't very much of the book to, to call your book Proof of Heaven. So... I ended up giving it three stars. I thought the story was interesting anyway. Um, apparently, he's gone on to write several, several books about this. So, anyway. Um, that was, I gave that three stars. Um, then the uh, crime, uh, tr <laughs> slow down. The True Crime Book Club for February was Mindhunter by uh, John Douglas. 
And um, hold on, let me pull it up. I'm pulling it up on Goodreads right now. In inside the FBI's elite serial crime unit, um, it was fantastic. I gave it five stars. I think most of the people in the book club today, when we discussed it, gave it five stars. It was. It's all about um, how John Douglas started his career, um, and that there was. Um, it was like his going into the FBI and how he learned about profiling, and he talked to like oh my god, almost every serial killer out there. It was so interesting. Um, yeah, I loved it. I loved everything about it. Now, it talked a lot about major crimes that he had worked on um, in the country and things like that. It was interesting in our book discussion. There was a lot of discussion today um, that was brought up by Melody. So, hey, Melody, how are you? She always comes in a guest in there. And Misha and uh, Karen and uh, Taylor and Danielle are our typical guest people that come in there. And Melody brought up the issue of it seemed a little bit that he was patronizing and he talked down to women in the book a little bit. We were talking about the time that the book was written or his experiences in the FBI, but it brought up this really, really good uh, good discussion, I think, about all of that, you know, and the whole idea of the FBI as the good boys club, so to speak, or police departments. We discussed the fact that it would be interesting to read um, being inside the FBI or a police department from a woman's point of view. So if anybody out there knows of a book um, that they would suggest, I would love to know about that and maybe read that for the book club. So please put that in the comment section below. I loved the book. I thought it was great. I wanted to read the book. I told Mel this. I want to read the book because I want to watch the show. So I'm going to start watching. She already did. She already started it. So I think I'll start it too, Mel. I'll start it too. Okay, so I gave it five stars. Then the next book... I read was the Peterisms book for um, February, and it was Make Your Bed, Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World by William H. McRaven. Okay, and I gave it three stars. I, I probably would have given it two, in all honesty. I went into it thinking it would be like a great graduation present for friends' kids or, you know, like people getting a new job or whatever. Um, I always look for books like that, you know, that are kind of like self-help books that are like 100 pages. So this is the story. Okay, this guy was a Navy SEAL for like 25, 35 years. I don't know. Does it say on here how long? Um, he gave the commencement speech at the University of Texas in 2014. And this is basically his commencement speech. And it's like 10 things that he learned in the Navy. Well, the 10 things that he learned in the Navy are fantastic. I love the things that he learned, okay? And then each story that goes along with the lesson is about five or 10 minutes long. Um, but he starts it off kind of talking about all of the lessons. And then he goes in and he explains all the lessons word by word, and then he goes in and it's commencement speech. I mean, it was kind of like, it just was repetitive. And um, I will say, like, this is where it's hard for me because what a cool thing that he got this book out of this commencement speech. And he is just a really neat man. I mean, he really is. And the things that he learned are just fantastic. And they really are, you know, like lessons for life. His voice was, so he read his own book and his voice is really hard to listen to because it's just, I mean, he's a Navy, he's a Navy SEAL, okay? And it's just completely monotone. And I have to listen to a little personality when I'm listening to a book. Um, but, you know, like, it fit with what... The book was short. So, it wasn't horrible, but, like, it wasn't anything that I didn't already know either. Um, but it did make me think about things. You know, it's, like, interesting, like, after I read a book sometimes, if a book... Like, this is how I really decide whether or not... Like, there could be a book that's a three, that by the end of the year, I'm like, oh, no, that book's in my top ten because it's really stuck with me through the year. I would say that is a book that has kind of stuck with me since I read it. Um, you know, there are some things... Like, he talks about, like, you know, never fear the sharks kind of thing, like or da don't back down from the sharks, that, like, talking about fear and dealing with bullies and things like that. And I've really thought a lot about that lesson. Every day that I get up, I try to make my bed now because... I always did, but... We sometimes leave our bed messy, and so I've been trying to make it more. And um, because he says, you know, accomplish one task each day um, before you leave the house. The rest of them were okay. They were either like hit or miss for me, you know what I mean? So I gave it three stars. Anyway, then the next book that I completed was The Hand on the Wall, which is the third book by Maureen Johnson, the Truly Devious series. I loved this book. Okay, I started this book, and I had such a hard time getting into it. I think partly because I knew it was the third part in the series and I was really sad about the series coming to an end. It appropriately ended. I really wish there was more books in the series, but I understand that, that can happen. Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't think that she's making another one. I guess I could look on here. Um, but I don't believe that she is. I, um, okay, so when I started it, I didn't really think that I was going to like it. Like, it was kind of depressing and, um... Yeah, I don't see any more. She doesn't have any more listed on here as the next one on the thing. Uh, I, 
I just didn't think that I was gonna love it. I didn't, you know, I wasn't super impressed with it. It seemed kind of sad to me compared to the other ones. And then it, it turned, and then I was like, it became like probably the most mysterious out of all three, like where it was really a mystery story, a true mystery. Um, Maureen Johnson did a fantastic job. I recommend it to my true crime book today, my true crime book club, you know, that like if you really like true crime and mysteries, you'll love the series if you like Young Adult. It's so well done. I will say one of the things that was interesting to me was the first and second book were very young adult. The third book was more new adult. I mean, they discussed topics in there that were like a little bit older than what you typically read in young adult. Or maybe young adult is starting to age down a little bit. I don't know. I haven't read as much young adult as I used to. So is young adult like aging down in books that, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I felt like there were more like sexualized topics and things like that. Not about sexuality, but just about like <laughs> doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I was kind of surprised that it was discussed in that book. Um, I mean, I don't care, but it, you know, was what it was. And, um, but like, it was really, really well done. And I, you know, one of the things that occurred to me when I was like almost towards the end. So if you don't know what it's about, it's about this mystery that had occurred at Ellingham Man uh, Manor, which was this school, which is now this Ellingham Academy, um, in the thirties. Okay. And then it's this girl, Stevie, who's like a sleuth amateur detective comes there to solve the case as a student okay so the three books are all around that and people are dying left and right one of the things that I like I mean I just kind of was like this is a fun series I like this and whatever but like one of the things that occurred to me I was like the last hour I was listening to it and I don't know why it took that long to occur to me but I was like Maureen Johnson is a genius. Like, for her to weave this whole storyline and mystery that occurred in the 1930s, I mean, whole characters, storyline, murder, mystery, I mean, this kidnapping, this whole storyline that occurred in the 30s exists right beside this storyline and characters and all this stuff that occurs today. It's really two different books merging together. It's fantastically done. I mean, it is probably... One, I mean, if you look, read it all as, you know, together as a book or as a series, it's one of the best books or series I've ever read in my life as far as, like, the creativity of putting it together. It's so well done. It's, I mean, it's really genius writing. It really, really is. I gave it five stars, obviously. I mean, let's just be for real. Okay, so let's uh, hurry up and get to the rest of this. So then, I have to tell you, I said in my vlog that I don't like these Audible originals. So if you have Audible, like every month you get to pick like one or two of these really short books. And they're anywhere from like two hours to six hours, okay? I think you get, um, let me see real quick. I think you get, if the March ones are out, I'm going to go crazy. No, the February ones are still up. I'm ready for the March ones to come out. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six. You get six and you get to pick one or two. I get to pick two because I get two credits a month, right? Well, I was like, these books are stupid, and they're only two hours long, and who'd really care anyway, and I don't really want to read these. And then, <laughs> I'm going through my library, because some months I didn't even pick the free, they're free, they're absolutely free, okay, you don't have to pay anything for them, there's nothing for free in life, okay, you don't even get free ice at McDonald's anymore. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like going through them, and I'm like trying to pick out a short book <laughs> to like add up my numbers from the week, you get it, okay, thanks Mel, that was called cheating. So I'm sitting there. And um, I saw this book that I had that was called Tenica Jones, and it came out, it was like two hours and three minutes or something like that. So I read this, listened to this book, you guys, it was an hour, five stars. It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Okay, let me read you the synopsis for it. Um, oh my God, it's so long. How, where am I out on time? Okay, the epic and uh, high hilarious deposition, so it's a deposition, a legal deposition, okay, of Tinica Jones performed by Parks and Recreation and Good Girls star Retta as she details the theft of her beloved namesake by fame-seeking missile uh, Kelly Smith and her arduous journey to expose Smith for the imposter she is. What's in a name? The name Tenica, for example, has been passed down in the Jones family for generations of women. In fact, the Joneses name a Tenica every other generation to let the name breathe a little. To let each Tenica shine, and shine is exactly what Tenica Jones intends to do. A grocery cashier by day and an empire in the making by night. Tenica Jones has been paying her dues, saving coins, and taking businesses and marketing classes, ready to launch her lifestyle brand for anyone who wants to live like her. That is, intentionally and fabulously. Okay, it is so good. I, I howled listening to this. It's absolutely hilarious. It's some of the best writing that I've ever seen, comedy-wise or otherwise. So good. So then when I finished that, I was like, well, what other books do I have? Okay, because I had, I had not picked my February one yet. So then I noticed that I had The Last Days of August. Okay, the last days of August was like I think three hours long, two hours and forty-five minutes or something like that. And the last hours of August, I gave four stars. And let me tell you what it was about. This is not for everybody. I'm going to tell you right now. 
This was um, about the adult film star, August Ames. That's why I call the Lost Last Days of August. And about her taking her own life. Trigger warning. I will give you a huge trigger warning. There's a lot of mental health issues. A lot of like discussion of that. As well as adult issues in this book. Um, but it was about the fact that she had tweeted something out in December of 2017. And she got a lot of comments back at her. Um, and that she considered bullying. And then she went and she took her life. And it was uh, this documentary team. It's very much told like a podcast documentary that goes in and kind of investigates what really happened. Um, it is not a murder mystery. They make it very, very clear from the beginning, which I think is awesome. I mean, it humanizes her and it also like discloses that this is not like we're trying to figure something out, you know? Um, but it discusses a lot about the, the just the, the whole world of the adult film industry, but it's really not so much about that. It's really about uh, her growing up and like mental health issues and relationships. It's, it's very interesting. I was, I give it four stars because I don't know that it profoundly impacted me on any level, but it does talk a lot about bullying and cyberbullying on Twitter specifically. And, you know, having seen all of that happen and go down, I just was like, that was really fascinating to me. Um, and really the lack of remorse that a lot of people had for that too. Okay, and then I read um, Alone with the Stars. I loved it. Okay, so I'll make this really quick. This was another Audible original. It was about this girl named Lizzie who was, who was 15 in like 1937. And it was when Amelia Earhart's plane went down. And she's like obsessed with Amelia Earhart. And this girl is adorable. She's so sweet in the book. And so she, her dad's transistor radio who's like can go like pick up all over the world. He says Tim, Tim Buck too. And the, he can p pick up. Tim Buck 2 on a clear day or something like that. Anyway, she um, hears an SOS from Amelia Earhart. And then it flashes forward to when she's 69. And it's, it's so good. It was really, really good. And then I kind of got weirdly obsessed with Amelia Earhart. And I was like looking up all these articles about her. So anyway, and then the last book that I read was Cut and Run, A Lighthearted Dark Comedy by Ben Acker. And it was narrated by Meg Ryan. And Meg Ryan, correct? Uh, does it, where does it say? Oh, yeah, narrated by Meg Ryan. And um, I didn't like it at first. It's about these two people that steal kidneys, but from people that are dishonest. <laughs> They're like kidney thieves, organ thieves, but only from people that are dishonest. And it is like this, con I don't even know how to explain it. I could totally see it being a mo movie, but like I started out at like three stars and I ended up at four stars. And I think I might have been able to put it at five stars. Like if I saw it as a movie, I would love it. It was hilarious. It's very much dark comedy, but totally worth it too. And I will say this, what I learned is that those Audible originals, if you have Audible, because there were months that went by that I'd never picked out my free ones. You better bet your B-U-T-T -T that I'm going to be picking those free ones out from now on because I loved them. So um, yeah, I don't have any more of those free ones left. So wait for the March ones to come out. But that's what I read in March. I read nine books and I'm going in, or that's what I read in February, nine books. I'm going into March and um, I've almost already finished my first book. Snap, spirit fingers. Okay, so anyway, let me know what you read in the month of February in the comment section below. I love you guys. And um, also I'd like to know if you use the Audible Originals, like if you use those original books or not. <laughs> All right, you guys, I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.